Great to see you all this morning. It's a wonderful morning, Friday morning, end of the week. I hope that you all have had a good week so far and looking forward to your weekend. So welcome to Tea With Me. Welcome. Um, I see Christine is having organic lemon balm tea. I don't even know what lemon balm is, <laughs> but I'm learning about teas on this. And I myself, you know, um, I'm drinking mint leaf, fresh mint, you know, because... Um, I bought a little mint plant from a sale that our Sandy Grandy branch had. And surprisingly, it's living, <laughs> you know, it is alive and it continues to, th to thrive, you know. Um, I realize it has new leaves and all sorts of things. Normally, I'm notorious for killing these plants. But I bought the mint leaf and um, so I tried that this morning. So I'm, I'm, very, I'm having bush tea. You know, we grew up on bush tea. So, you know, basically that is what it is. Um, so I want to encourage you all this morning, you know, share the video, um, like the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, you know, do all these nice things because it gets the word out there. You know, I have an interest in something to share with you all this morning. Um, and, you know, a little different. You might really want to share it. You remember on Good Friday, I shared a little story about um, Sir Boulder, I think his name was. Um, I shared a little story about him, and he went, you know, he was somewhere in England, it sounded like, and he heard this clock, and the clock, instead of striking 12, it struck 13. And, you know, the Holy Spirit just, was just stirring that whole idea of, you know, when the clock strikes 13, what does that even mean? What does it mean? And... You know, I just started to ponder the entire idea. And I had to conclude that it marks, you know, 12, when a clock strikes 12, and I'm talking about the midnight hour now, when it strikes 12, it is that midnight hour. It's the end of a time. It's the end of a season. That's what that, anytime you hear that clock strikes 12, it's usually referring to the end of a period right? The end of a day. In, a, in our normal days, it's the end of a day. And so I started to look at that. And so what is this 13th hour? If it would, the clock would strike 13, what is that 13th hour? And that 13th hour is extra time. It's extra time. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a time, it's a grace period, so to speak. A time of extra grace and mercy where your time should have run out. But now you are on extra time. And I'd even dare say on borrowed time. You know, and this guy Hezekiah in the Bible came to mind. Um, most of us would know his story. Because Hezekiah had reached his midnight hour. Yeah? The clock struck 12 for Hezekiah. And the scripture tells us in 2 Kings chapter 20. From verse 1 to 3. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But it says there that the, you know, that the Lord said something to him. It said that in those days, Hezekiah, he was sick unto death. All right? So he was sick. And of course, if he's sick, you know, he, he would be hopeful, you know, to be healed and all of that. But the prophet came to Hezekiah. This is Isaiah, the prophet, came to Hezekiah. And when a prophet like, he like Isaiah would come to visit you, you know that he's a true prophet. You know, you know, when these false prophets come, you don't have to be too concerned. But when a prophet like Isaiah comes to you, you say, okay, prophet, what exactly are you coming with? And so when he came to him, he said that the Lord says to you, Hezekiah, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. What a message. What a message to get. Set thy house in order. So Hezekiah realized that this was the midnight hour. The clock just struck 12 for him. It was over. And the scripture says that Hezekiah, he turned his face to the wall. I could just picture him. He turned his face to the wall and he said to God, he said, Lord, I beseech thee, meaning I beg you, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. Now, he must have had that testimony before God because he was able to bring it up before God. Right, And there are times in our lives when we're going through certain things. You could bring up your testimony. You could bring up your legacy, so to speak, before God, because that now speaks on your behalf. Right? So he said, Lord, remember these things. And it said, Hezekiah wept sore, meaning he was broken when he thought of the idea that this was it. 
This was the end. It was the midnight hour. And the prophet was leaving. Isaiah was already out the door and he was going his way. And the Lord stopped Hezekiah when he got to the courtyard. He said, I want you to turn back. He want, I want you to turn back and I want you to go and tell Hezekiah something. And he went back to Hezekiah and he said, I have heard. The Lord said, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Right? He said, behold, I will heal thee. That's the kind of news you want to hear. You know, that's the kind of news you want to hear. I will heal thee. He said, on the third day, day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. So he isn't healed yet, but he told him, on by the third day, after this experience that you're having here, you're going to be walking yourself into the house of the Lord. Amazing, eh? And what the Lord did, he said, I will add unto thy days 15 years. So Hezekiah got 15 years added onto his life. Guess what that was? He had reached his midnight hour. The clock struck 12 for him. And then the Lord gave him a 13th hour. You see, when we get a 13th hour, we have to consider what am I going to do with this 13th hour? What am I going to do with this extra time? You know, what am I going to do with it? The 13th hour is not just about escaping death, not by any means. You know, so many of us went through COVID recently and people's jobs were hanging on the line and for different reasons, you know, things that were being forced and whatnot. And, and for these different reasons, some people, your jobs were on the line. And so, so midnight was striking for you and then you got a 13th hour because your job was saved and you're still in your job. Yeah, that is a 13th hour. When you consider some marriages were, were for, due for extinction, the marriage was like it was over and then things turned around and you still have your marriage today. That is a 13th hour. Right? There's some people, you're, you're playing with sexual sins and all these things and, you know, um, and you had a near miss, right? You narrowly escaped some disease or you narrowly escaped, you thought you were pregnant. You're there playing with fornication and playing with adultery, right? And you thought this was it. You thought midnight, the midnight hour came for you and then bam, when you check, it wasn't so. You escaped narrowly. That is your 13th hour. And I'm going to tell you what you're supposed to do with your 13th hour. <laughs> right? Because you have to do something with it. I, I have a, you know, I remember a, 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 a guy, you know, playing around with sin and all this thing. And then he, told, he, he thought when he got some news, he was with somebody who had um, an incurable disease. And listen, you talk about get white like a sheet. You talk about frighten. Listen, but when he did the check and realized that he got away, all nonsense stop. He said, I done with this foolishness. Listen, was getting warning after warning after warning. Eh? But when that midnight hour came, he said, wow, boy, not me again. Straighten out his act, you know. Straighten out his act because he got a 13th hour. Right? So it is important what you do with the 13th hour is that you take that extra time. You take that second chance, so to speak, and you make right with God. That is the wise thing to do, to make right with God. You, you get back your job. You use the opportunity to save. Use the opportunity to bless somebody. Use the opportunity to be a blessing in your church. Right? All of these things. When you get that 13th hour, you use it. Those of us who were flaky with our Christianity, when you get a 13th hour, you make sure you have oil in your lamp. Right? Like those foolish virgins, remember the midnight hour came. And when the Lord came to take his bride, five were foolish. They had no oil in their lamp. Right? Because the midnight hour come, they probably thought they would get a 13th hour, but there was no 13th hour. Right? Midnight came and met them. But for some of us, our midnight could have come already. But we got a 13th hour. When you get that 13th hour, we have to make use of it. We have to fill up our lamps. Right? If we were sleeping, we need to wake up. <laughs> That is what you do with the 13th hour. You wake up and backsliders. When you get a 13th hour, backsliders need to come back home. 
It is time to come back home. You can't stay out there. Get inside of the ark before the door shuts permanently. Listen, all of these things happening in the world is a shaking, you know. It's a shaking and it's almost as if the Lord is trying to say to all the people who are asleep, shaking, shaking, come on, everything is happening. It seems as though things are happening rapidly, one behind the other. And it's like the Lord is saying, come on, wake up, wake up, because the midnight hour is, is upon us. Or it could be that some of us, it could be that the entire world right now could be in their 13th hour, you know, could be. Because God in his mercy could have given us some more time. Because there are certain things that were lining up in a certain way. But as the church prays, certain things will happen. You know, so many of us, eh? the Lord could be there prompting us to, to, to deal with some bad habits that we have. You know, to break some bad habits. Sometimes, and sometimes we call it simple things, but it's not so simple when it comes down to disobedience and obedience. Eh? Um... Things like, you know, the Lord might be telling you, you're having too much sugar, too much salt, too much coffee, and we're not listening. And then you come and you start to get some little palpitations. Listen, when you get that palpitation, that is the clock starting to strike 12, you know. And so what we need to do when you get that, take advantage of the warning. Take advantage of that midnight warning. Because what comes after that, because that's like a midnight trumpet. And what comes after that is whether you don't know if you're going to get a 13th hour. So when you get the 13th hour, take advantage of it. And some of you listening to me, you know that God has been calling you. He has been calling you, wanting you to get in, to, to surrender your life to him, or to get into a deeper relationship, or to come back to church. Maybe, you, you know, you stop coming to church and you've been watching it online and maybe the Lord has been calling you to do that and you're just there, you're on the fence. But it's the 13th hour and I'll tell you, I want to share a little testimony with you and I'm going to actually show you the video. I pray that that goes right. I'm getting fancy now. I'm, I'm showing um, video on the side and all sorts of things. So I'm getting fancy. But... um. I'm going to share this testimony with you. They're, these two brothers, they're twins. Um, they originally from some place in Africa. I think it might be Nigeria, but they grew up in Scotland. And these, these two brothers, they got saved at a very early age, like age 16. But of course, as these young people got saved, with a, listen, got saved there, but with a tremendous prophetic call on their lives, both of them, right? And... They played the fool. They, they, their names are Toby and Tommy and Tommy or Arimi and Arayomi, if you want to say it like that. And they played the fool, played the fool. And then one of the brothers, Toby, he, you know, would hear the word of God and eventually he sorted out himself and he was walking the straight path. But the other brother, he wanted to have a little time in the world before he settled down with God and all sorts of things, playing the fool with girls, all kind of thing, right? And this call of God is on your life. And this one day, this preacher, a woman, was, you know, ministering to him, talking to him. And she realized, but listen, I am talking to him and it seems like nothing is going in. You know, she realized nothing is penetrating. And she said to him, she said, you're not listening to me. She said, but God is going to show you himself. And this is the part where I want to pick up the testimony. He was in the car with his family. And we want to pick up the testimony from here. I pray that it goes well, but let me just play that video for you. That night I'm driving. I'm in the car with my parents who are driving, my dad's driving, my mom, my sister, my brother, and me in the back seat of the car. And everyone's asleep except for my dad, who's obviously driving. And um, I hear a voice, and it says, Tommy. And the voice sounded like my dad. It was so audible, so clear. It sounded like my dad, but my eyes were closed. I, I wasn't you know, paying any attention because, you know, if an African parent wakes you up, it's to ask you, how's your school, how's your grades, and are you focusing in that order? And so I pretended to be asleep. Then a white light came over my eyes and blinded me for a couple of seconds. I opened my eyes, I looked, and I called my dad. I said, Dad, did you call me? And my dad said, no. I said, Dad, I know you called me. I heard you. You said I didn't call you. I said, then, 
Dad, what is this flash? Did you get hit by a, a, a traffic camera? And my dad said, no, I didn't. I immediately was about to go back to sleep and I heard the voice again, tell me, audibly in my ears. I said, who is this? He said, this is Jesus. He said, you were supposed to die today, but I'm gonna save your life mm. and I'm gonna call you into the ministry. Whew. All of a sudden, my, my parents, uh, the Lord told me, wake your parents up, wake everybody up, tell them to put their seatbelts on. I woke everybody up and said, everybody put your seatbelts on. I don't know why, just do it. And everybody did it. And the voice yelled, now yell at the top of your lungs, watch out. And at the top of my lungs, I yelled, watch out. My dad, startled by my scream, switched lanes instantly into the middle lane. The lane we had just departed, five cars just crashed into each other, including a police car, and we missed it by a fraction of a second. And it was in the back seat of a car that I surrendered my heart to Jesus Christ. Yes, guys, so I hope you got to hear that and that it, it went well. But if you got to hear this story properly, you realize that God, he was supposed to die that day. That was supposed to be his midnight hour, his midnight moment, and God spared him. So he got a 13th hour. But I tell you something, this young man went on to be one of the most accurate and powerful prophets that I know today. You know, I follow his ministry. He's one of the most accurate. Every year he would put out these, the Lord would um, put these um, prophet, prophecies, you know, give him these prophecies, and he would come back and show you what is happening in the news to show you that these things have, have happened. So he is living out his 13th hour, and he is glorifying God with his life. You know, I saw Robert just posted there. He said that, you know, 10 years ago when he got saved, he believed that's when he got his 13th hour because now he's 18, 84, you know, and the Lord has given him that extra time. So he said he's living his, his um, 13th hour. And I tell you something, when we get a 13th hour, we have to make use of it. In 2015, I was supposed to die pulmonary embolism. I was supposed to die. Listen to me. The, when the doctor saw what was going on in my lungs, this, he said it was not just one lung that had clots. It was two, both sides of my lungs, huge blood clots in my lungs. I could not walk two steps without feeling sick and feeling as though I was going to pass out. When I went to the hospital and they're there doing the checks and whatever, I'm in the... Oh, and they, were, they put me in a wheelchair to carry me to do some x-ray or something. I seized up and went and went. My husband just saw me get stiff. Went and all. And I just remember going to, I just remember experiencing intense peace. I knew I went somewhere else. I was very aware that I was somewhere else. But it was peace like you can't, like you could touch peace. It was like that. And then all of a sudden I was back. And when I came back, I said, oh my gosh, I went somewhere, you know. But I looked at that. I said, listen, the Lord brought me back for a purpose. So I am living my 13th hour. I am living my 13th hour. And this is why when people see me busy for the Lord and doing things, they don't realize that it's because when you get your 13th hour, make good use of it. Make good use of it. So I literally had to give the Lord all your life, all your time, everything, right? And this song came to mind. My life is not my own. To you I belong. You know that song? My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. And that's how we have to live. When you get a 13th hour, make good use of it. Amen. So people, that's what I wanted to encourage us with today. Share the video, especially if you know some backsliders. You know people who are struggling to settle themselves with the Lord. They may have had experiences or are coming up to the midnight hour. And the Lord is trying to shake people awake and to tell them, take advantage of this time. Amen. God bless you all. Have a fantastic weekend. And join me again next week, Wednesday, for tea. Amen. God bless you all. Love you all. Have a wonderful week.